morning. Good morning. It is so good to be with you here this morning. Uh, announcements for you. First, you'll notice that there is no announcement sheet in your bulletin. Uh, that's not a mistake. Life just got caught up in the office this week, so use your ears and watch your email for uh, the announcements a little bit later today. But announcements for this morning. First, thank you to everyone who came and helped with, who supported, who ate, uh, who advertised for our Santa breakfast. We had a wonderful time yesterday morning. We have lots of goodies that are still looking for homes. So if you need a Christmas gift for a colleague or a family member, uh, and you don't have time to bake yourself, visit the uh, Fellowship Hall after service, pick up some delicious baked goods, and they are half price. Hey, what more could you want? Homemade baked goods at half price. If you have questions, please speak to Carol Hemchuk. Speaking of Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve service this year will be at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. on December 24th, and Diana will be uh, having a small choir at that service. Uh, they are singing, He Came Down, is that correct, Diana? He is born. He is born. He is born. And so if you'd like to join in singing in the choir, uh, Diana has copies of the music. Uh, please pick up a copy and uh, read through it, learn it, and... Um, and they'll practice after church next week. It's going to be amazing. It's going to sound like angels. Um, we are still looking for uh, an assisting minister for Christmas Eve, so if you'd be interested in serving in that role, please let me know. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation this morning? Yes, Ron. Uh, just a reminder, the kind of Okay, so council this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Yes, okay, yes, go for it. Uh, the group will not be meeting in December, but we will resume on the uh, third Thursday in January. All right, the group will meet on the third Thursday in January. Thank you, Genoma. Mm -hmm. Any other announcements? Seeing none, I do invite you to turn to your bulletin uh, and to stand as you wish or you are able as we begin our service with our call to worship. We gather in the name of God, the creator of light, Jesus, the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit, the light who illumines our path. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. Today, we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. God has a peaceful dream for the world, and we dream it too. We dream a peaceful world full of wolves and leopards and lions eating and sleeping and dancing with lambs, kids, and calves. We dream of a peaceful world where nations come together, where war is a memory and we eat at one table. We light this candle in peace. On this day, we remember the Lord of all who brings peace surpassing all understanding. We invite you to join us as we sing our gathering hymn today, hymn 256. 
Comfort, comfort, now my people. Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Merciful God, you sent your messengers to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Turn us away from our sins so that we greet our coming Redeemer, Jesus Christ, with joy. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended, that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert, make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised up, every mountain and hill will be flattened, uneven ground will become level, and rough terrain a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear, and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. A voice was saying, call out, and another said, what should I call? All flesh is grass. All its loyalty is like the flowers of the field. The grass dries up, and the flower withers. When the Lord's breath blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass dries up, the flower withers, but our God's word will exist forever. Go up on a high mountain, messenger Zion. Raise your voice and shout, messenger Jerusalem. Raise it, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord God, coming with strength, with a triumphant arm, bringing his reward with him and his payment before him, like a shepherd, God will tend the flock. He will gather lambs in his arms and will lift them onto his lap. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will, uh, we will read Psalm 85 responsibly. Lord, you've been kind to your land. You've changed Jacob's circumstances for the better. You've forgotten your people's wrongdoing. You've covered all their sins. Let me hear what the Lord God says because he speaks peace to his people and to his faithful ones. Don't let them return to foolish ways. God's salvation is very close to those who honor him, so that his glory can live in our land. Faithful love and truth have met. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the ground. Righteousness gazes down from heaven. Yes, the Lord gives what is good and our land yields its produce. Righteousness walks before God, making a road for his steps. The second lesson is found in 2 Peter, third chapter. Don't let, us, let it escape your notice, dear friends, that with the Lord a single day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a single day. The Lord isn't slow to keep his promise, as some think of slowness, but he is patient toward you, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to change their hearts and lives. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day the heavens will pass away with a dreadful noise. The elements will be consumed by fire, and the earth and all the works done on it will be exposed. Since everything will be destroyed on this way, what sort of people ought you be? You must live holy and godly lives waiting for and hastening the coming day of God. Because of that day, the heavens will be destroyed by fire, and the elements will melt away in the flames. But according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort, <clears throat> make every effort to be found by him in peace pure and faultless. Consider the patience of our Lord to be salvation, just as our dear friend and brother Paul wrote to you, according to the wisdom given to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized, to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the river Jordan and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, One stronger than I is coming after me. I am not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, we've come to the second week of Advent. We've come to the second week of our series called A Holy Light. And last week we talked about the holy light of hope and how we bring that hope out into the world. This week we talk about the holy light of peace. Now, peace is something that is in seemingly short supply in this world. It seems like there's no peace anywhere to be found. But maybe we're seeing peace in the wrong way. Maybe there's a different way of looking for peace in the world. Maybe there's a different understanding of peace. And it brings to mind this story about a Texas farmer who went to England and while he was in England, he met up with an English farmer, and he said to the English farmer, well, how many acres is your farm? And the English farmer, very proud of himself, goes, 35 acres. And the Texas farmer goes, oh, and he gets a little crinkle above his brow. And he goes, you know, get into my truck at 8 a.m. and drive uh, for four hours until lunchtime and still be on my property. And then I can get back my truck after lunch and drive four more hours and I am still on my property. And the English farmer thinks, you know, I had a truck like that once. <laughs> all in how you see things. It's all in how you experience things. And sometimes things come in unexpected ways, in unexpected packages. In our gospel, we hear about God's herald, God's messenger, God's announcer coming. And it's John, the baptizer. John, the baptizer, dressed in camel's hair with a belt and eating locusts and wild honey. It's quite a diet. John, who lived off the grid before it was the fashionable thing to do. This, this, this is who God chose to be his announcer, his herald, his messenger, the one who told people, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Get ready, God is coming. It's not what we expect. We think Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings. You think that his messenger would be a little more polished, and yet it's John. John, who calls people out of the wilderness to come and to be baptized, to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, but who also says, I baptize you with water, but the one who is coming after me, he will baptize you with fire, fire from the Holy Spirit. That's not what we expect. We don't expect a baptism by fire. Baptism is by water, isn't it? 
And yet this is what John proclaims. John proclaims this message of good news that doesn't sound anything like good news. Get ready, he says, because God is coming. And when we think about peace in our society, in our world, we often think that peace has to be something in which it draws people apart, puts people in their own corners, people away from those who they are fighting with. But that's not the way God's peace works. That's not how Jesus functions. That's not how we understand God working in our world. Now, when we talk about God's peace, we don't talk about siloing ourselves off, going back to our own camps, staying in our own corners. Peace does not come from separating ourselves. No, peace comes from when we come together. When we come together and we talk, we come together and we find that we are more alike than we are different. Peace comes from when we get to know the other and we get to know them as well as we know ourselves. God's peace in our world looks like us getting to hear somebody else's story, coming and hearing how they have experienced God in their lives, how they have experienced the world around them. Peace in God's way is about a coming together. It is about serving the other, serving those who look different, pray different, believe different, do differently than us. For God's peace sees how we are more alike than we are different, and God's peace brings us together as one. This is not what we expect, but yet this is how God has set the world to be. God's peace is about going out into the world. It is about gathering in and bringing together all of God's people. And it is about celebrating the fact that we can do more together than we ever could alone. The peace of God is not what this world expects. God's messenger, John the Baptist, is not what we expected. And yet, because God does things so differently than the world does, good things come, and the light of peace is able to shine the world around us. And for all of that, God's people said, Amen. Our hymn of the day today can be found in your bulletin. It is the hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. And we'll sing the line uh, where it has the option of two. Um, so we invite you now to stay sure you are able as together we sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
And now, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us bring our prayers to God, who listens with grace. God, we are waiting for your salvation. Please hurry. Bring blessings and comfort through your powerful deliverance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As your son comes back, prepare your people, O oh God. Free us from routine faith. Make us humble, faithful, and devoted, so many may come to know you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Stay with persecuted Christians who boldly confess you. Let their witness shine and soften their tormentors' hearts for the gospel. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Get us ready here for the Savior's return, Lord. Help these congregations lift up humble and lift up the humble and remove self-centeredness smoothing the way to Jesus. Bless these members and friends, Gary, Wendy, Samuel, Joan, Sharon, and Andrew. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Prepare the world for its true king. O oh God, help leaders to move beyond division and despair. Replace prejudice with peace and righteousness everywhere. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy. Prepare suffering hearts for the great healer. Heal and lift up all those on our prayer list. Take away their pains. With your son's gentle hand, lead them and their loved ones to health and hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Thank you for all who died trusting your promises. Grow our trust in Jesus' promise to return as judge and redeemer. Come, Lord Jesus, free us from doubt despair, and death. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Graciously hear these prayers for Jesus' sake, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. It is at this point in our service in which we will receive our offering of gifts and tithes. It is these gifts and tithes that allow St. Luke United Lutheran to be the place where the people of God gather. They gather to hear about the peace which the world cannot give, the peace that Christ brings to us all, and how we, too, can be a light of peace in the world.
Let us pray. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts from your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, who is your promised light, which no night can overcome. And so with the church on earth, all creation, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. You're invited to be seated and to come forward for Holy Communion at the invitation of our usher. Our communion hymn today is hymn 264, Prepare the Royal Highway.
We invite you to stand as you wish or you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, our bright morning star, we give you thanks that you have fed us well through the bread and wine of your supper. May it enable us to shine brightly in all the dark places of our world with your love, justice, and peace. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. And now may the God we hope for and yearn for bless you, comfort you, and bring you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn today is hymn 266, All Earth is Hopeful, and we invite you to join in singing along. <laughs> 